It's the 1st of December, and this is the very first episode of the start of a series of 12 videos, which I'm making throughout December. Every other day, there's gonna be a video, and they're gonna be gift ideas, decoration ideas, festive things you can have a go and make it at home yourself. Hi, I'm Dom, and welcome to my grotto. I don't wanna hear any excuses because everything that I'm gonna make is honestly very, very simple. I mean, today, what are we using? Oh, hang on, I haven't even got them. Where are my scissors? What a start, okay. So I've got my scissors, we are gonna need these. But the one thing that I really wanted to show you how I made was something from the repair shop, last year's Secret Santa gift that I gave to Kirsten. I made her a brass reef. It went down really well, Kirsten loved it. I had so many people message me asking me, how did you make that? Are you selling them? Can we buy one? It's like, well, now's my chance to show you how to make your own one so you don't have to buy one. We start on a dog walk or a wander around the fields, try and find yourself some holly and some ivy. I prefer the ivy. The shape of the leaves look much nicer, but I'm sprinkling in a few bits of holly just because it's Christmas, why not? There's all sorts of things you could do. This same process would work really well for making mistletoe, which would be perfect. Instead of getting buying a piece of mistletoe, you could just make brass mistletoe leaves. You can make the little balls out of um, like Fimo pastry, uh, Fimo, <laughs> like the, the air drying clay, whatever that stuff's called. It's not pastry, don't make them out of pastry. Sheet of brass. I got this from a model shop. I mean, every time I go into those shops, I end up spending a fortune. They've got all the old enamel paint, all the little spatulas and spreaders, and some really interesting little tools and tool holders and all sorts of bits. I ended up buying some pairs of pliers and some other rolling tools, and it was a disaster. But if you're strict, <laughs> be stricter than me. Go in there, head for the materials aisle, get yourself a couple of sheets of this brass. Thickness, so 0 0.005 of an inch, and it's by four inches by 10 inches. I made Kirsten's one out of much thicker brass and it was a bit of a nightmare. So anything thicker than 0 0.005, I would try and avoid because this stuff you can cut really easily with just your normal pair of scissors. So I'm probably on the same, actually on the same display, wherever these are all displayed, you can get these. This is very thin brass rod. And then this stuff, I got from Hobbycraft. It's brass wire. Very, very thin, easy to move, loads on the roll, and it was literally a pound or two. Then all it is is a case of getting a piece of paper, cut it to the same size as the brass sheet. So it lays over the top. And then just spend some time picking off leaves and drawing around them. What you're trying to achieve here is the best use of space. So there's minimal material waste. So actually you're laying down the leaves. They're all the actual size of the leaves. They're the size you're gonna cut out. Big ones, small ones, tiny little ones. Look at this little tiddler. There you go. So that's the sheet of paper, the same size as the brass sheet with all of my leaves, Got my ivy, there's some holly ones in there. There's some tiny little ones up here. Or if there's a little gap, I've squidged in, look down here, another little leaf, tiny little one in there. They're all numbered, you don't need to do that, but I've numbered them so I know where they go, um, so I can keep reference later. But get yourself to that point and you're doing well. Next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just use a bit of spray glue, you can use anything, whatever, to just stick this piece of paper to the sheet of brass. I need to line this up. Careful, careful. Right, so now I've got my sheet of brass with my leaves stuck to one side. So it's just a case of now with some scissors and spending some time cutting out these leaves. The critical point, you need to spend the time here getting these leaves looking as accurate as possible. A really good tip when you're cutting things out like this, obviously be very careful because the edge of that brass, 
brass. <laughs> the edge of the brass is gonna be quite sharp. So if you're already a glass or two of mulled wine down, be aware that it could be sharp. The, move the piece of brass instead of the scissors. Feed the piece of brass in and out and around instead of trying to move the scissors around. It's a good little tip. I think I learned that in school. My art teacher taught me um, and it works really well. You just spin that leaf around, wiggle it in and out, in and out, try and create a nice organic shape. Lovely. Here's my piece of paper with the brass behind it. Once you've done, peel the piece of paper off. You're left with a brass leaf. Look, brilliant. I'm sure you're sick of me sitting cutting these out already. You know what? Let's go to a time lapse. Now you've got your basic leaf shapes cut out. Don't be disheartened if they look a bit ropey. This next step is gonna transform them and they're gonna get better and better. Looking back to nature again, to look at these original leaves, they are not flat. They're all sort of tapered into the middle where they start and they, the leaves at the end sort of bow backwards, they fold inwards. So we're just trying to replicate all of those natural organic shapes and moves and curves with whatever you've got. I've got a couple of different types of pliers here. Really, honestly, it can be anything. Even, you know what works quite well? An old blunt pencil or biro. You can actually mark the brass and it will leave a little indent. You can like re replicate all the little veins in the leaves. I'm using the edge of the scissors actually. That's quite nice as a long straight line, hard to put that initial crease down the middle. Then you can bend, nip the end back, bend the top forwards, twist the sides round. Looking back to nature, all of these leaves are on little branches. That's not a branch. I don't know what you'd call that. What would you call that? A little sprig? Cutting strips of this wire off. Leave it longer than you think. And then we're gonna solder that to the back of the leaf. Now, don't get scared. Don't freak out. Because the brass is so thin and this wire is so thin, it is really, really easy to do. $8.99 for a soldering iron. Go and get yourself one. Look in the back room first in the shed in your toolbox because I bet you there's one in there. Whenever you're soldering anything, you need to have flux. So flux is, was well, a paste. This is really old and it's got a bit manky. But you, so you put that on each surface of what you're trying to solder. So we're gonna put a tiny blob on the back of the leaf and a tiny blob in the, on the end of the piece of wire. That helps the solder flow. It helps to clean each surface. Everything's got to be very, very clean. So give it a little bit of a wipe down. Make sure it's got no glue or grease or anything else on it. A little bit of a clean, dip it in the flux, and that just helps the solder flow and stick to each surface. It's your, any bog standard flux you can easily get from any builder's merchant, screw fix, tool station, anywhere like that. Then the solder, this is Electrical solder. This, I think, one is from. This is, uh, I think, this is from B and Q. It's really, really, really thin. That helps because you don't need very much of it. So there's no point in having a big fat one. Dab a touch of flux on it. Whoa! And then load that up with the solder. Put the solder on the end of the soldering iron. Then in with a little dab of flux on the end of the wire, and then. Wipe a little bit of that flux on the back of the leaf where you want to solder it. Then as soon as, it doesn't take much. If you put enough solder on the end of the soldering iron, barely touch that on there. That's it, perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> yes, look, there you go. My leaf is on its little stem, done. And that is it, and that is really strong. That will hold it. Look, that is not going off there. A little bit of flux on the wire.
And then we're, now it's the time to, so we're trying to recreate a branch, like a whole sort of sprig of ivy. So you were just gonna gather a bunch, one, then another one, step, stagger it slightly, and you're just gonna twist them together. Tiny little one in there, twist that in, work that in with the rest. But just sort of knot them in amongst themselves. And as you do, I mean, I've done what? One, two, three, I've got four on there now. And I'm already starting to get almost like a branch. Look, you can just manipulate them as you want. Big one at the front, tiny little one that hasn't grown. Try and keep it true to nature. Tiny little one that hasn't grown as well as the others yet. Keep him near the middle. Look at that, a little sprig. So I've just got a loop of the wire in a circle. Make individual sprigs and then just add them in. And then you can literally position it where you want. That's gonna go in there. And then just twist that on to the whole main thing. Done. Now, obviously you can spend a lot more time than I have. I just wanted to show you how on earth it's done. You can spend a lot more time arranging, adding berries, adding little balls and bells and balls, whatever you really fancy. I quite like it plain at the top, just with a bit of ribbon at the top there, that would look really, really lovely. That's what I did with Kirsten's one on the repair shop. Could do with a few more bits here, but then actually saying that, there's enough leaves on there, you just move them around, twist them around, intertwine them with each other, spend some time dressing it and arranging it, and you've got yourself a Christmas wreath. This is the first video of Dom's Grotto for this Christmas. Um, 12 gift ideas we've got every other day coming out. They're not all gonna be metal. They're not all gonna be soldering and made of metal. We've got fabric, textiles, clay, uh, paint, all sorts of things coming up. So I hope you'll stick around and watch the next one. Please leave me a message in the comments. Let me know how you got on. I'd love to see what you end up making. So do send me some pictures. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me again. And I'll see you next time.